because he's looking really impatient. Yes. Thank you, Pat. Um, on private, Travis King, have there been any new substantive communications from the DPRK, either to the U.S. or the United Nations Command? And does the U.S. have any knowledge on the state, the status or well-being of Private King? Yeah, thanks. I don't, I don't have any updates to provide in terms of any new communication. Certainly, uh, our priority remains Private King's well-being uh, and efforts to, to get him home. But I don't have any specific updates on that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Go to Tom. Thanks, Pat. Um, last night, uh, the Pentagon sent out a note on a taken question regarding the cluster munitions uh, testing and survey. I, I have two related questions to that, please. One is that uh, you're not going to give it to us, I understand that. Will the information from those tests be provided to Ukrainian officials, since obviously they'll be using them? They promised to map, they had said they're going to map where they use clusters. Will that information be given to the Ukrainian officials for their use and consumption since basically their civilians will be impacted by it possibly as well? And, and the second one, I am a little curious, maybe you can, without you know, straying into the security issues, what is it about the testing rates, the dud rate, that has to be classified? Why is that classified? Yeah, what, what can sure. be given to the adversaries? Thanks. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with your second question first. Um, wh why is it classified? Um, because, I mean, you answered your own question. That's that's information. Yeah, there you go. So, right, next question. No, so the uh, that information, any type of sensitive technical data that could provide a potential adversary with insight into the specifics of um, down to an nth degree as far as the effectiveness of those weapons, the range of those weapons. I mean, there's going to be an unclassified aspect to it that gives broad general numbers, but it's not going to get into deep technical data. So, in other words, it's the effectiveness it, aspect of it that would, is the classified element. All, all the data combined in the aggregate makes the reports classified. Uh, in terms of whether or not we're going to provide those reports to, to, to the Ukrainians, I, I think, again, you're um, – appreciate the question, but I think you're conflating two things, right? There's the, there's the research and testing aspect of any weapon system. Uh, that we will do on our own weapons, right? Then there's, that's not information that's necessarily relevant to an end user um, that's receiving the product, okay? They, they know that it works. They know, you know, uh, well, obviously what they'll need to know in terms of uh, the classified aspects of range and things like that, but not necessarily research and development uh, statistics. And, and on that topic, uh, all indications are right now, based on the, the information that the Ukrainians uh, are providing to us on using those weapons, that they're living up to their commitment, that they're using those weapons appropriately. Uh, and so there's, there's no concerns from our perspective. Just to be clear, well, uh, yeah. before yeah. you move on, and I appreciate your patience with me. Uh, so I understand now the classified, because, you know, the effectiveness, uh, you don't want the adversary, the enemy, to know the effectiveness. But conversely, wouldn't you want your ally, in this case, Ukraine, to know how effective they would be also? Again, it depends. If we're talking about operational use versus research and testing, it's two different things, right? Every single weapon system in the inventory probably has a classified aspect in terms of the research and te development and the testing, as opposed to the operational execution of that capability, which is a separate set of data. Um, yeah, so, okay, let me go to Rio. 